What's up everybody? Hope you're all doing well. Today I want to talk about my one year experience in Costa Rica. One year ago, I moved here around March 9th and it's been a, a journey of a roller coaster. I moved to Costa Rica from Canada. I was, had a comfortable life there, you can say. I had a nice job. I had a place to live, but I wanted freedom and Canada was not giving me the freedom. So I came here. Why I chose this country, I never been to it. I never did any research about it. But something called me here and I answered, I'm here. My main purpose was to come to come here was to set up a self sustainable homestead. I wanted to live in tune with nature. I wanted to create a community that's oriented towards freedom. I wanted to create a place for healing for people. But at the same time, I wanted to explore because I never explored the world before. And this is the first country that I traveled to outside Canada. I haven't Took, taken any Spanish class before I came here, so the Spanish wasn't easy for me. So I came here with absolutely nothing, with no knowledge, but I had this vision in mind. And I know a lot of you may be thinking about leaving Canada or leaving the United States, wherever you're living, and you may consider moving to Costa Rica because you've seen videos about it on YouTube. And you see how beautiful of a country it is, and you want to come here. I want to make this video to those people who have just moved here, are considering to move here from the West. Because I made a lot of mistakes that I want to share with others in hopes that uh, you can learn from it and avoid and save money and also save your time. The first tip that I can give you is you need to figure out your mobility options. Car is a must here. Bus service is not that as frequent and it's not as reliable depending on where you want to go, especially if you want to explore. If you're here to settle down, you may want to drive to different locations to see the properties and some of them especially if you're if you're looking for properties in mountains the roads are rough you need a 4x4 and if you are counting on uber some cars they don't have that so it's important that you invest in a very reliable car right at the beginning i rented the car for one month uh, because first of all i wasn't sure if i wanted to stay in this country or not so I didn't really want to buy a car, but looking back, it would have been better for me to buy a car instead of renting because renting is very expensive here, especially if you want to rent a good 4 by 4 automatic car. Uh, it can cost as much as close to $100 per day. So it's important that if you have decided to live here, the first thing you should be looking at is after, of course, setting up your cell phone and uh, basic things like banking, you need to be looking into getting a car and just to run through the basics cell phone sim cards are very easy to get you can either go to claro or colby uh, they're very popular you can just find them on google you just go to their store uh, the agency and get yourself a sim card all the all you need is your passport and in terms of how to handle money i use this uh, online platform called wise that's connected to my canadian bank account so you can do the same thing. So you can sign up to WISE. And they have, in my opinion, the best exchange rate. They offer better exchange rate than the banks for sure. And also, if you set it up in advance, so WISE gives you a, a kind of like a credit card that you can use for your purchase here. So that's how I do it. And of course, it helps create creating a, a bank account at one of these uh, banks here. I will go to how to open a bank account in a bit. So first of all, buy a car. Find something reliable. 
uh, you can uh, I found it on Facebook so you can just search on Facebook just make sure you do thorough mechanical inspection and know what you're buying don't buy anything cheap in this country one of the important things I learned is cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap so when you just look at money and you go after cheap things it may not work out in your best interests so it is better in my opinion and from my experience to buy something quality and to hire someone with quality with whatever you're looking for don't fall for things because just because it is cheap always do your due diligence so after you get your car the next thing I would say is if you're looking for a property look a lot take your time don't be in a rush because there is a lot of people who will take advantage of you in real estate everyone is a realtor here you say you're looking for a property all of a sudden you'll say you will hear people coming to you I have a property I want to show it to you then they take you to this rundown place or some place that you don't even have interest in so be very clear with what type of properties that you want to have write down the features of the properties that are must have for you do you want it in a mountain is internet a must for you is paved roads important for you how about water access do you want a river on the property what is the the altitude that you want your property be, to be in so it's important that you come up with those lists because it will help you save a lot of time so whenever you're looking for property and someone tells you they have a property you can ask them this question okay tell me if if it matches these checklists and then only if it matches you go take a look at it because a lot of times at the beginning I just used to go to any properties that I find because I was just very curious and it turned like sometimes I, I wonder man why did I come here it's like a rugged roads and uh, middle of nowhere you know cow poop everywhere it's not taken care of properly but I, I did that based on my curiosity at that time I didn't know but if you want to do that you can do it too but uh, it's just better if you're very clear with your list and your requirements and you narrow it down now how are you gonna find those properties it's up to you you can do it multiple ways search on Facebook marketplace you can join all these Costa Rica and Facebook groups moving to Costa Rica Costa Rica expats there's a bunch of Costa Rican groups like you know just search for it real estate Costa Rica uh, so many like you know as you find these groups yeah it will set Facebook will suggest other groups just join them all so that's where you will see owners and real estate agents they post their properties there uh, it's a it's a good place to start and of course it would serve you well to go with an experience so if you want to go with a realtor go with someone who has a lot of experience who's been in it for a long time you will know who they are uh, I found a really good one I can recommend you if you are looking for properties in San Isidro El General uh, he's from the United States so like you know he's a very good resource he has a lot of knowledge his name is Rick so if you're interested I can uh, provide his uh, information to you so that's how I found the property that I, that I bought so it's important that you need to find a reliable person like that to to find real estate here a lot of people they say like you know real estate agents they're scam and this and that but you know there's some truth to it at the same time if you find a good one they offer value and it's worth it and most of the time you don't pay the commission it's the seller who pays it so it works out you know both ways I would say find a reliable like you know just ask a lot of questions usually real estate agents they don't ask you to pay or sign any buyers or presentation or anything like that so if someone asks you for that like, you know just see it as a red flag and walk away search on Facebook look a lot and only purchase or go visit a property if it matches your checklist when it comes to negotiations you're gonna have to have a lot of patience here I noticed that 
the Costa Rican people, they have this notion that foreigners, especially if you come from the West, you have a lot of money. And they tend to come up with arbitrary numbers out of thin air. And they say, I want to try this number and see what happens. You got to be detached from your emotions when that happens because they don't know what they're talking about. And they just want to play around with the numbers to see if you're going to offer. So you got to be very careful with that. You need to find out what the ideal property is worth. So from my research, when I came here, like the properties that like when I was doing the calculation by per meter squares by square meters, it was between $2 to $4 on the average. So for example, one hectare is about 10,000 square meters. So one hectare should cost anywhere from 20,000 to I would say maximum $40,000 in uh, San Isidro Hell General. If you find properties that are on a higher end, like at $10 or like $20, be very careful of that. Especially if you're buying a raw land that doesn't have any electricity, doesn't have any home, and where you have to do the work to bring in the water, you shouldn't pay more than, in my opinion, three to four dollars max. And of course, if the property has like you know additional wow factors such as a river or like a water source, you know it changes. It's like you know you can push the boundary up, but I would say stick to that. The, the range that I gave you, two, four, five dollars max. And you need to compare with the other properties that are around there. So that's why you need to look at a lot of properties before you settle on one because you don't want to overpay for real estate here. Because once you overpay, chances are you won't be able to get it back. So it's important that you take the time to find a, a reliable real estate agent or like if you're doing it on your own just do your own due diligence be careful before you purchase before you even get to this stage i want to talk about something very important if you're coming from an english speaking country or like a german or like whatever different language out there and you don't know spanish it is super important for you to at least know some basic before you come here so before i came here i started learning on duolingo I did some Duolingo probably two to three hours every single day. And it got me to very basic level of Spanish. So when I got here, I was able to survive. Like, you know, I, I would go to the store and I was able to order stuff. But then it wasn't enough. I still was struggling a little bit. So I enrolled to a Spanish school here uh, that helped me a lot more to learn. And of course, just talking to Spanish people every single day, you develop. But it is important that you have that intention to learn the Spanish language and you have that intention to communicate properly. Because if you don't, if you don't speak Spanish, my friends, you are in deep trouble because you won't know the dangers of not being able to communicate you can easily be tricked and be taken advantage of but i'm not saying all the people are like that but it is true if you don't speak spanish if you are naive you can be taken advantage of so don't be don't be naive you are in a spanish speaking country don't expect people here to speak english it's your responsibility to, to learn the language the local speak so you can communicate with them a lot of people here, they're very friendly, they're very nice, and especially if you speak Spanish, they are they're impressed by you and they want to help you. Because unfortunately, a lot of people are also struggling here and they think that it's because of the foreigners coming into the country and driving up the prices. You see this, the hostility more in the touristic area where like places like Hako or near the beaches like Ubita you will see that the locals are around that place they have 
hostility towards the foreigners because the price has been increasing all the price like I'm talking about not just real estate like groceries uh, like basic things they're getting pushed out because of the foreigners money there and they have that hostility in them and if you speak English and if you don't make any effort it rubs some people off in the wrong way so it is important that you learn Spanish find a Spanish school either online or in, in person and study Spanish all it takes is one to two hours of studying and then you just go out there to the store and you communicate it doesn't matter how stupid you sound if you mispronounce a word or if you don't know what you're saying like you know just carry around a Google Translate and little by little the more you practice it the easier it becomes so it's important that you learn Spanish if you come here all right so now we looked at uh, buying a car we looked at you know the real estate and now I want to talk about something very important bank accounts are important especially if you are planning to buy a large property or like you know doing planning to do a large purchase you need to have your finances in order so here the two banks biggest bank I guess the state banks are Banco Costa Rica and Banco National in my experience Banco Costa Rica is a hit or miss I know like you know when I did the research on Google some people said like you know Banco Costa Rica lets foreigners open bank account but in my experience when I went there they were a little bit snobbish they were saying something like uh, oh you need to have a property here to open a bank account but and then I went to Banco National uh, they were very kind and uh, friendly so they just told me that to open a bank account here I, sh I either need a rental agreement or I need something else I don't know what the other thing was I can look it up but they said I need like a rental contract so, like so that's what I did so I looked for a place to rent where I can live and then I asked the uh, the owner to provide me with a rental contract which I used to open a bank account in Banco National it's very easy like like some people say like foreigners cannot have a bank account here but it's not true you can open an account at Banco National with a rental agreement so find a place you can rent is cheaper by the way than staying in Airbnb because Airbnb roughly like on average it's about hundred dollars hundred US dollars a night it can add up quite a bit so it's better for you to find a rental rental depending on where you live costs around 300,000 colonies that's about 600 US dollar and you just pay utilities like water and electricity which is very cheap so with rental you can live here under like thousand dollars including your groceries and everything but with Airbnb you may be spending close to two thousand or like three thousand dollars depending on the on the location and the Airbnb you choose so it's better to to get a rental until you find a property okay cool now if you have your car you found your land you did your research you, you, you know you bought a property and you have a bank account now let's look at how to build <laughs> this is where a lot of scammers and a lot of thieves and a lot of traps lie I say like a crocodile so it's a swamp you know you got to be very careful when it comes to building and construction here my Spanish teacher they call these groups gremios to me gremios I, I think gremios means like a union or a group but in English when I hear the word gremios I think of the word greasy fucks you know maybe I shouldn't say that <laughs> there's a lot of greasy people in construction you know it's a swamp you know you got to be very careful here and they're here to get your money especially if you don't speak Spanish you will be targeted right so they will act nice and friendly to you but then when the opportunity comes they will just stab you 
because unfortunately in the construction field a lot of them are uneducated they don't you can say they're not civilized they are very raw kind of people so you have to deal with them differently you cannot be very soft with them you cannot be too nice to them you cannot be too friendly to them you're going to you should be strong enough to step on their throat if necessary because they do that to you and if you don't do that then you get stepped on so it's better to step on someone else than get stepped on that's my thinking that's what i learned from my experience here so if you decide to do construction here especially building a home never 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 pay in advance doesn't matter if the builder says i only work with people who pay 40 percent or 50 percent advance just tell the guy to fuck off because he's looking to scam you all right here you never pay in advance never i'm telling you never 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 doesn't matter how good the builder says he is like he, even he's from the united states or canada like even if he's from like you know a western country if anyone asks you to pay in advance to start your home never do that so instead what you do you pay them by the week you pay them at the end of the week either friday or saturday friday is better after the work is done so you be, before you, you even like you know begin construction you need to write a strong contract you don't have to go to the lawyer you can just draft contract on your own on what work needs to be there you know list every single thing that the the contract that the work is for so if you're building a home you know list all the characteristic of the home how big is the home like if you have the floor plan put the floor plan if you have the the measurements put the measurements if you have the features such as the finishes put the features be as detailed as possible create a checklist in the contract and then have them revise it and then have them sign it you sign it and they sign it this contract is a legally enforcing contract because it has your name the builder's name there make sure it has their id like you know make sure you get the photo up there here they call it the cedula so i guess that's the resident card so make sure you get all the information and put them in the contract and then put the payment structure in the contract too tell that tell in the contract that they get paid set the, the weekly the first payment being one week after the commencement date and also it's important that you indicate that the payment is dependent on the progress if they don't make any progress the payment is not going to be adjusted so you know that's why i asked you to make a checklist because when you make a checklist checklist right so let's just say there's like 50 items on the checklist the walls the floor uh, the uh, the roof like you know things like that so they you need to each week you need to keep track of like you know how many items on the checklist that they finished so you only pay it based on the progress they made so for example let's just say on week one they only finished three out of 50 items on the checklist that's very minimum so you pay based on the percentage that's how i would do it so because if you don't do it you will get walked on and a lot of builders they will walk away from this con like they wouldn't want to work with you because it is it weeds out all the 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 not good contractors so if they walk away don't feel like oh man like uh he seemed to be such a great person uh, i'm walking away so i need to pay him in person no no never 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 do that all right if they walk away just be glad that they walked away and find someone else this is how you weed out the swamp this is how you drain out the swamp all right there's a lot of snakes and there's a lot of crocodiles in the swamp all right they will bite you and they will take things from you don't be a victim right take control of your of your finances especially when it comes to construction and protect yourself because if you don't protect yourself no one else will and another point i want to bring out is if you are building a home i want you to consider the budget in mind like a lot of 
foreign builders, they say like it should cost about 1,000 square meters to build a home. It's not true in my opinion. You can build a very nice home under $400 per square meters, including labor and material. Actually, much cheaper than that if you're smarter. So recently, I built a home here. He's, like, my budget initially was about $400 per square meters, but you know, like I made a lot of mistakes. And then right now it's around 550. That's what 50 per square meter. That's I think that's what it's going to be when it gets finished. But if I were to do it again, I can do it well under $400 per square meters. I'll be very smart with the finishes. So just to be to give you some ideas on how you can build, I want you to be smart about the materials you choose. So here. Building two floor homes is expensive than building a one floor home. So if your budget is minimal, I will just start with building a one floor home. Even with a one floor home, I would do things differently. So let's just say you're building a one floor home. I would build it on a on a raised metal frame with concrete floor and I would they call it the cement or lugato here. So it's like a smooth concrete. You don't have to put porcelain or anything like that on top. So you save like a couple of thousand dollars of worth of materials and maybe a couple of thousand dollars worth of labor there. And for the wall, you can uh, put something called gypsum. Gypsum is like a drywall, but it's very cheap here. So you can put gypsum. It doesn't need uh, any sort of uh, they call it something called repejo. He doesn't need that. And gypsum costs fraction than a concrete block or like a or like a duroc. So that's something. Like if you if you're confused about these terms, don't worry about it. They can just tell the constructor this is what you need, and they can help you out. And windows cost a lot of money. So that if you want to reduce your budget, the less windows you have, the better it is. But at the same time. If you can shop around, if you can save money from the walls and the floor, you can put it towards windows. And for the roof, just go with the zinc roof. You know, just keep the home very basic. If you do what I said, like that build, like for a 50 square meter or like even 100 square meter, you can build that home for, I would say maximum 20, 20,000, 20 to $25,000 for one floor home. And if you want to make that same thing, two floor homes, I would say thirty to forty thousand dollars. Just be smart about construction. Protect yourself. Costa Rica is a beautiful country, and I'm not saying all this to scare you. You have to be smart. You have to be strong, and you need to be willing to adopt to the local culture, learn the language, be ready to learn new things every day, be ready for the challenges, and be ready to overcome them. And I wish you guys the best in your journey here. And I wish you guys the best in settling down and finding a dream property, whatever it is that you want to do. And if you need any help, that if you need any help at all, you can reach out to me. You can uh, comment on my video or just message me. And I will do my best to uh, help you with your journey here. All right, my friends, until next time, take care and be fearless.